Uh, good morning. I am Ling Guang from um, Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, uh, today I will introduce our work on a revisit to a, a vulnerable implicit service. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my presentation. First, I will introduce some background knowledge of the Android application. Uh, we all know that Android applications are composed of four types of components. And which are activity used to handle the user uh, interaction, and service used to handle the background task, broadcast receivers used to receive the broadcasters sent by the system or by another application, and content provider used just like a database. And each application will have an Android manifest .xm file. All the components defined by this application should be declared in this manifest file. And the components can be invoked by another application. So each application can be an entry point to the application. And in this paper, we focused on the service components. Uh, there are two ways to invoke the service components. The first one is through uh, explicit intent, and the second one is through implicit intent. Uh, for example, here is um, the code snip of the manifest file of the Google Play Store application, whose package name is com.angel.wedding, and here it declares a service component. We can see it defines, the, um, it defines here the name of the service, and also it defines an intent filter here, uh, which uh, include an uh, action attributes tells the system what action this, this service perform. So here it tells the system uh, the service perform an APP billing operating. Uh, if an applica another application wants to invoke this service, he can he need to define uh, an intent. And he needs to set the action value uh, just the same as the action value provided by the service. He can, define, he can use an explicit intent by set the package name here as the ones, as the uh, package name which provides the service. And then uh, invoke the service. But if the developer could not determine the package name or he does not care about which application provides this service, he can use an implicit intent. Here, uh, the only difference is he do not set package. But here is one problem is the implicit service invocation might suffer service hijacking attack. Uh, we can see from here, application A start an APP billing service through uh, an implicit intent with the action set to in app billing service dot bind. If there is only one application provides this service, that's no problem. Just as shown here, no doubt the app billing service provided by uh, this com android dot wedding application will be used to serve this request. But if there is another malicious application which also provides this service, as in application A, it does not specify the package name. Now the, cho now the system will have two choices. He can use application B to serve the request. He can also use the uh, com and draw wedding this, service, this application to serve the request. So here we all have, uh, in this situation, hijacking attacks might happen, which means uh, malicious application B might hijack the service invocation of application A and is selected to serve the request. When this happens, all information which intended to be sent to com.angelwriting application will now be sent to the, uh, this malicious application B. So the information sent, and the information sent might be sensitive, such as it might be sent billing information for this uh, APP billing service. Sorry. Uh, so here, the uh, uh, hijacking attack means uh, means a application. Yeah, application be hijacked, right? Okay. And it is very easy for uh, a for a malicious application to hijack a service invocation because uh, 
when there are several services corresponding to uh, an implicit intent, the services are ranked according to the following six attributes. And these attributes are ranked in a priority descending order, which means uh, here the first the priority uh, attributes has the highest priority, while the package name has the lowest priority. And the four attributes the marked red right here are set by the developer. And in our analysis, we find that about 98% service set the priority value to minus 500. And the value range for the priority attributes is minus 1,000 to 1,000. So minus 500 is a very, is a very low priority. Therefore, it is very easy for an attacker to hijack a service invocation by setting a higher priority value. Uh, for this reason, from Android 5, the implicit service invocation are forbidden. Uh, this is an official statement from the Android website. It says that, begin with Android 5, the system slows an exception which will cause the app crash. When, uh, the, when the service are invoked through implicit intent. So what is the purpose of our paper? Uh, we want to evaluate whether this forbidden policy can resolve the safe, uh, service hijacking attacks uh, by analyzing the vulnerable service invocations before and after the forbidden policy. Uh, to, uh, to, help to, to help for this analysis, we proposed an uh, implicit service and analyze framework. And it contains the four modules as shown in the picture. Uh, the first one is the uh, API file of replication is first input into a preprocessor, in which will output some smelly files and manifest files of replication. And then, a static intent analyzer is used to obtain the values of intent uh, that used to invoke a service. And then we use the reachability verifier to verify whether the service invocation are reachable from the entry point of the application. And finally, uh, the vulnerable service invocations are identified through the vulnerable service analyzer. Here is the preprocessor and the reachability verifier are all, uh, we all implemented based on existing tools. So uh, in the following, I will introduce the some details of the static intent analyzer and the vulnerable service invocation analyzer. Uh, first, for the static intent analyzer, uh, our goal is to, to obtain values of intent used for service invocations. And here we can see there are many attributes can be set to an intent variable. And only four attributes marked red here are critical to our, uh, our, our target to, uh, to analyze the vulnerable ones. So we only analyze these four attribute uh, values. And the basic idea is that we uh, construct an inter, inter procedure here. ICFJ means inter procedure control flow graph. And we do a depth flow analysis based on this ICFJ. But we only uh, analyze based on puzzle ICFJ, which consists of the methods between uh, intent constructor to intent consumer, which means we only analyze the method from where the intent are construct to the method where intents are used to invoke a service component. For example, here is one method in which this here is the place where an intent variable is created and set the action attribute of the intent. And then here the intent is used to do to invoke a service. So we only need to analyze this method. We can get the attribute value of the intent. Another, another thing we need to do is we, uh, in the following, I will introduce the how to identify the vulnerable invocations before and after a forbidden policy. Uh, the vulnerable service invocations before the for, for, forbidden policy are also the vulnerable invocations on Android 4 uh, and lower platforms because from Android 5, 
the forbidden policy is enforced. And there are, total, there are uh, in total two types of invocations. The first, we have just introduced the implicit service invocation will vulnerable to service hijacking attacks. And the second one, we call it resolved service invocation, and which are which are used to convert an implicit invocation to an explicit one with the help of the following two APIs. With the help of these two APIs, the invocation of the service components will not cause an application crash. But we found some problem here. First, the query intent service is used to return a list of service mapping to one implicit intent. And the linking rule of the return service list of the query intent service is just uh, linked according to the CS attributes we have just introduced. So the linking result of the query intent service could be manipulated by the attacker. And the result service, the second API uh, just return the first service return, returned by query intent service. So here, Result service inv invocations through these two APIs could still be manipulated by the attacker. Therefore, it still suffers service hijacking attack. And on the other way, we also need to analyze the uh, vulnerable server invocation on forbid after the forbidden policy. First, the result service invocation are still available on the platform with higher than five, so these are also vulnerable ones. But although Google claim that it forbids the implicit service invocation on Android 5 and higher platform, and we find that implicit service invocation are still allowed on Android 5 and higher if the application's target SDK version are set to value less than 21. Otherwise, the, uh, the application will indeed crash. So uh, in the following, I will introduce the, our experiment and the results. We used the two data sets of the same 1,390 popular Google Play Store applications. We call the first one old application, which are downloaded between August to uh, October 2014, which are one to three months before the forbidden policy. And for the second one, is we call it a new application that set, which are downloaded in May 2017, that are 30 months after the forbidden policy. And this is the general result. From here, we can see the one of the invocation reduced from 643 to 112. That is about 82% reduction. But after, after a detailed analysis, we found the invocation can be divided into three categories. And the most reduction are targeting at the same origin service and Google service. The same origin survey here means that the service, the invocation of service, the invocation of service defined in the same application. But for the other third party service, the reduction are only 23%. And we find the other third party service uh, actually, are the main, are the, are the primary challenge to resolve the service hijacking attack because it is very easy to convert an implicit intent to an explicit one for service invocation for the same origin service and Google service. For example, for the same origin service, we only need to set package name with the return of the get package name API. And for Google Play, Google, Google service, as the invoke service are famous and few in number. For example, here. Here in the 1258 invocation targeting at Google, Google Play, Google service, there are only three applications involved. So it is very easy for the developer to set package name for the Google Play, Google Play service. But for the other third party service, it is very difficult for the developer to determine the package name of the service he wants to invoke. First is because the service types are huge in number. For example, there are 25 service types are involved among only 81 service invocations targeting at the other third-party service. 
And it is also difficult to evaluate the trustworthiness of the uh, applications by the developer as the application, involved applications are various and huge in number. In the above, we have just introduced the first reason of the vulnerable invocations in new applications. Uh, this here, I will introduce the, the second reasons of the vulnerable in new applications. That is the difficult for all developers to update the applications in time. Because a statistic analyzed found that about 20% applications need to be manually updated after the forbidden policy. Because in this 20% application, it contains the implicit service invocation. And the that the the statistic also, also proved uh, this, uh, this conclusion. Yet we found 55% vulnerable invocations are targeting at are, are the legacy implicit invocations. And there are even 62 are targeting at Google and same origin service. Even it is very easy for the developer to convert the implicit ones to explicit ones for these two, these two types of service. And we found the, the main reason is because of the outdated SDK and outdated sample code. Because in this outdated SDK and sample codes, the, the service are invoked through implicit intent. When these SDK are adopted by the application, or the sample codes are copy paste to the application, the implicit server invocation will be included in the application. In the following, we, I will introduce the, the remaining vulnerable invocations in the new applications. In total, we find 112 vulnerable invocations, and 57 are vulnerable to hijacking attack, and 55 are vulnerable to denial of service attacks. This is a sample list of service hijacking attacks in new application. From here, the consequence column, we can see hijacking of the service that might cause sensitive information leakage, such as the bank account information or VPN login credentials leaked. And as the applications we analyzed are very popular applications from Google Play Store, we found millions of users might be involved, might be affected by these attacks. So we grew that those hygiene attacks are still a problem. Even after three months, after the forbidden policy are enforced. And we have reported this problem to Google and they confirmed our, uh, our analyzed. And this is the response from Google. But in this response, we don't see uh, a very op operational solution to resolve the service hygiene attack. First, it tells that you want to rep represent application from using these APIs in an insecure manner, but it does not clarify how to prevent. We can, we can think service should be invoked by explicit to promise secure, but, but in some special situation, this is almost impossible. For instance, uh, during in, in our analysis, we found a service provided by Citrix, which published a service specification defining its API and action to invoke the service. But he allowed uh, allowed all uh, different developers to provide to de develop the service with different package names. Therefore, it, it is difficult for the developer to, spe to specify the package name. Uh, to, to invoke the service. And second, Google advised he will educate a developer to write secure application codes. But, I, but we think this uh, may not be very uh, operational because uh, there are so many developers that are involved and they are in different backgrounds. And based on our analysis, we also provide some kind of methods to uh, mitigate the service hijacking attacks. The first one, I think we can do some optimization in the ranking rules. That is, we can give higher priority to the same origin in Google service when there are several applications providing the same service. 
and with less optimization, about 87 and 44% vulnerable invocations would be blocked for the old application and new application that set. Second, for the main challenge part, which is the other third party service, I think we can use a market based service ranking mechanism. Let, the basic idea is to evaluate the trustworthiness of applications through Google Play Market because there are some attributes combining to one application in the Google Play Market, such as download number, review score, or review number. And these values intuitively directly reflect the user's satisfaction with the application. So, at least values that are difficult to be manipulated by the attacker. So we can use list values to calculate a trustworthiness score for each application. Uh, let me give a brief conclusion of our work. First, we proposed a vulnerable service invocation analysis framework. Second, uh, we analyzed the effectiveness of the forbidden policy through two data sets with the same 1,390 applications. And we analyzed the key reasons of the residue vulnerable invocations and discussed the countermeasures to mitigate the hijacking attacks. Thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we, we do not, uh, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, we do not process this time because we use the static analyzer to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we currently, we, we cannot process this type of, yeah. But in our analysis, we find uh, we the attributes of the of, of the intent we analyze usually will not be obsolete. Yeah. Yes. Hi, uh, Yu Feng from UT Austin. So I have a question about the uh, intent analyzer uh, in your in your system. So I was yeah. wondering uh, because in general, uh, scaling the intent analysis statically in, in this large application, like uh, those popular apps in Google Play, is actually quite challenging. Like it's, in practice, it's actually neither sound nor complete. So how did you manage to adjust this challenge in your system? For instance, I would imagine that you have to do some sort of lightweight uh, intent analysis to scale your system. But uh, if you do that in a lightweight manner, so you might generate a lot of false positives. Basically, you might have the case that you have a core site that, that try to launch a component, but uh, since your analysis is imprecise, you might launch a bunch of candidates. So how did you manage to bypass this uh, challenge? Thank you. Uh, sorry, can you say the challenge again? So the challenge is how did you, uh, you are using a static uh, intent analyzer, right? Yes. It's, uh, you, you did a static analysis, but uh, from my own experience, uh, to to reason that uh, precisely, uh, oh, precisely. In, yeah, precisely okay. in large application like Google Play is actually quite hard. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, like Facebook, they have uh, hundreds of uh, activities and and services. So how did you manage to like how does the, the imprecision of the intent analysis uh, not affect your your uh, your final result. result? Okay, okay. I know I know your question. Thank you. Um, before before we, we take her. Uh, take the data to analyze the result, mm -hmm. we manually verify whether the vulnerable ones that are really a false positive or not. And we fill out the ones that are false positive. So you do you did some manually pre-processing for, yeah. for a no, thousand? A, a, after post-processing. Uh, yeah. Before uh, before 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 process the data, but but after, before people process the data, we manually fill out the uh, first positive ones. For a thousand, more than a thousand apps? Manually? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The second thing is for the, for the uh, potential vulnerable apps that are like uh, 
potentially compromised to denial of service. Mm. So uh, how high is that to, to perform the actual denial of service attacks on the, on the instance that you found? Uh, that's, that's different for different applications. Yeah, for, uh, I, I, I see for, for some application, it, for a denial of service attacks, uh, usually it is not very easy to trigger. Because if, if it is easy to trigger, the developer will 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 test it. Okay. Yeah, and we and we test it. Yeah, least least the denial service are most in the not 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 easy to trigger, not easy to trigger UI interactions. Yeah, but for a, a hijacking attack, it is very easy to trigger. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.